Welcome to the Practical Growth Podcast with me, E.B. Johnson, author, NLPMP, and cognitive reappraisal coach. This is the podcast created for people like you, people looking for more, more health, more peace, more happiness. Each week, I explore a new topic in pop psychology and help you build a better life and better relationships. Join me for special guests, exciting ideas, and practical advice that you can use to improve your life from the inside out. Let's get into it. Hello, 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 and welcome back, my lovelies, to another episode of the Practical Growth Podcast. It is me, EB, your favorite writer, your favorite TikTok coach, your favorite cognitive reappraisal specialist and NLPMP. And uh, we got a we got a juicy one today. It's a little bit different, right? I'm not really going to be going into a big lecture or a big lesson today. Uh, what we're going to be looking at instead is the horrifying case of Ruby Frank. Now, if you're someone who is on TikTok, is on YouTube, um, spends any kind of time on Twitter or Facebook, then you have probably seen this woman's name mentioned somewhere in the last week. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why we are going to be talking about Ruby Frank. I want to really get into this case, break it down and explore why it's so important for us, the survivors of narcissistic mothers, to pay close attention to this case. Okay, because, wow, when I tell you the twists and turns and just horrifying all around, but some really big clues in here for us, the survivors of narcissistic mothers and really big clues for the children who might still be in our lives, the children around us. The, the future children that are going to be coming up, right? Um, narcissistic mothers, how their mothers might be showing up with them on the internet and causing a lot of really big harm. Really important. So we're going to get into it here in just a minute. Before we jump in, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I know a lot of you have found me, you have come here, uh, you follow me on the back of medium.com. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I've spent a long, long time there. I've been writing there since 2019. But unfortunately, now it's just become too difficult. It's just become really, really hard work. Um, and my stories don't get shown to anybody. And they earn pennies if that and the earning is not what's important. It's the fact that they just don't show I have 33,000 some odd followers, and they show my stories to less than 1% of the people who follow me. So um, I have moved my best content and my original content and my new stories over to Substack. It works just like Medium. Um, you can follow me for free or you can pay for a premium subscription and you get new articles every week and free eBooks and all kinds of goodies from me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm over on Substack sharing my advice, um, sharing my articles. And most importantly, I'm sharing some really new kind of personal looks into my life. Okay. There's going to be some really kind of peek under the hood stories that I'll be sharing there over the next couple of weeks. So so if you want to get this kind of unique perspective on me and how I've done it and how I kind of find peace and solace in this chaotic world and, you know, the advice you've come to rely on, then you can do that over on Substack. Dead easy to find me. Just head to practicalgrowth.substack.com and boom, I'm right there. Um, you've got my whole medium archive there as well. So all your old favorite medium stories are over there. So go take a look, practicalgrowth.substack.com and give me a follow. All right, let's jump right in. Ruby Frankie, who is this? Who is this woman? You've probably heard her mentioned or, you know, maybe you've seen some videos about her in the last couple of days. Who is Ruby Frankie? What is what is she about? Why is she so famous? Why is she being talked about? What is going on? So Ruby Frankie is essentially a mom fluencer. Okay, she's a popular YouTube mom who, for years and years and years, uh, basically like a decade now or more, has been creating uh, parenting videos parenting videos and showing how she raises her six children. Now, Frankie and her husband have been making these videos for years and years and years. And these videos, um, again, all homemade and we're all about showing their six kids, Shari, uh, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve, and how they parented these children from a conservative perspective. Okay. They are big active members of the Mormon church, the LDS, I believe, um, and they believe in quite rigid, quite strict, no technology type of upbringing for their children. Now, that sounds 
great on the surface, right? That sounds, that's fine if you want to raise your children more conservatively because it was really like a 1950s kind of style of parenting. That's fine, right? Well, the thing is, um, Frankie, she and her husband had a very extreme method of parenting. It was very, very, very extreme. Uh, the channel has been deleted now, but you can still find a lot of the videos on TikTok. Thanks, TikTok. And you see things like Ruby removing doorknobs, removing doors. She takes the bedroom away from her teenage child at one point. Um, she denies them food. When they're sick, they're not allowed to sleep in their room. She makes them sleep on sheets next to the toilet. There's videos of her hitting them. There are videos of her pulling the car over next to fatal car wrecks and making the children look at it and telling them that should have been you. You should have been in the wreck. I mean, it, it's, it's really extreme. It's really disgusting. There's children begging for food and she tells them you don't need to eat. You're being punished. Uh, you're not repentant. Very, very extreme parenting that actually stops being parenting and basically turns into torture. So this YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, becomes wildly popular. It's got tons and tons and tons of followers, mostly women, okay, which is going to be important in just a little bit, who boost it. It, it goes viral. Uh, they were viral all the way back in 2015 with some of the controversial stuff they were doing, but it, it just gained them more supporters, right? They got a bunch of applauds for starving their children and and saying horrible things to them and yada, yada, yada. Well, a few years after that, that first big push around 2017, 2018, Ruby joined forces with this quote unquote therapist uh, named Jody Hildebrandt, okay? Because Jody now becomes Ruby's business partner. And they start making all these videos about super, super uber religious parenting. And and they had this one really controversial video that was all about what loving a child unconditionally means. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the one in which Jody was saying she makes the fire comparison. If your child came to you on fire, you wouldn't say, oh, honey, oh, no, you're on fire. You would start hitting them. That's what she says. You would beat them until the fire was out. And that's essentially what she says her parenting style is if they don't conform you beat them until they conform because you're beating them to make them a better person all right she's got tons of videos like this and again if you want to find them you're gonna have to probably go find them on tiktok uh, youtube has not been that reliable since the channel got deleted so so just kind of you be aware of that so fast forward to august 30th okay we've got this mother She's had this channel for years. She's starving the children on this channel. They're begging her to stop hitting them in videos. Um, she's got a video where her daughter is losing her vision and begs to go to the ER. And even the husband says, we have to go to the ER. And Ruby makes a video instead. She goes and sits in the bathroom and says, I don't want to go to the ER, so I'm going to clean the house and shower and get ready instead. Medical neglect. All of this kind of stuff is happening, right, for years. Fast forward to August 30th of this year, okay? August 30th of this year. It's late morning, okay, in Utah. Sun's just come up. The air is still pretty cool, but the day is already warming up. This couple gets a gets a knock on their door, and then they hear the doorbell ring. They open the door. What do you think is on the other side of their door? It's a 12-year-old boy with duct tape around his wrists and ankles. And he is covered in bruises and open wounds. And he begs them for help and he begs them to come inside. This is August 30th of this year, folks. It turns out <laughs> that this is Ruby Frankie's 12-year-old son. And I, I know I've already given you their names, but I'm not going to really kind of dwell on him because he's going through enough at the moment. But this is Frankie's 12-year-old son. He has been duct taped. He has been starved, beaten, tortured and has now escaped from the basement of his home. There is still duct tape around his ankles. There is a 911 call that has now been released of the couple who found him, and it's just heartbreaking. The, the gentleman on the phone within minutes of calling the police starts sobbing, audibly sobbing, because of what he sees in this starved boy who keeps saying it's my fault it's my fault it's my fault you can hear him over and over in the background saying it's my fault that his mother has duct taped him beaten him and starved him okay 
Police show up. They find the little boy. Apparently there was another sibling in the house that had also been restrained. Obviously, the police start making arrests. And that's where we are today with Ruby Frankie. Ruby Frankie and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, have been arrested and they have now been charged with six felony counts of child abuse. Since their arrest, there has been like absolutely stunning details that have come out, including that, you know, a week or two ago, there was a warrant or some kind of like order issue to go and look inside the house to perform a welfare check on the children that um, request was made by one of the older siblings who was no longer in the home judge or the police or whatever they decided not to act on it okay so that was a couple weeks ago there has been numerous reports to cps and nothing has been done that has come out since so there were people seeing this there were people trying to help but it hasn't done anything until today ruby has been arrested and since her arrest she has doubled down, doubled down on the abuse and the the shock tactics. That's right. Since um, Ruby's arrest with her business partner, Jody, she has appeared in court and pointed the finger at the child who exposed her. She's accused this child of heinous, heinous, heinous crimes in an effort not only to destroy him in the eyes of the law and the stories that he has undoubtedly told them, um, but also to isolate him from his siblings, because now that she has accused this child who escaped f- from the duct tape handcuffs and wrist cuffs she put on him. Now that she has accused him of horrible sexual crimes, this is a 12 year old, mind you, a 12 year old who has lived in an incredibly strict and sheltered house. Um, he's going to be isolated from his siblings for the duration of this until they can disprove any of those claims or this trial finally finishes. He may remain separated from them permanently if her story who Jody is backing up sticks. So that that's, that's pretty horrifying. And to me, top to finish the start of this story to now where we are in this unraveling is an excellent excellent example a horrifying but excellent example of who the modern narcissistic mother is i mean yes this might be one extreme end of the platform but make no mistake there were th- thousands and thousands if not millions of people following ruby and and what she and her business partner did i mean they didn't just have a youtube channel they had podcasts and things they they were a lot of business dealings they were business partners there was a lot of women <clears throat> who followed them and lifted up their parenting styles to me this is where it becomes important this isn't just a dramatic story to follow this is the narcissistic mother playing out on an international stage and we need to pay close attention to that the narcissistic mother of course is the woman who has children not for the act of connecting with those children but for the status that they provide her as a mother right Uh, a narcissistic woman has children because she wants to become a mother because being that title being a quote-unquote mother gives her a power over them and it gives her a certain amount of social power social credit in the circles that she runs in around her right whether that be at church or school or with other women yada 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 she gets higher up in the hierarchy if she has children so this is the narcissistic mother if you're unlucky like i was to get a malignant narcissist as a mother this extends further not only are you an object which is meant to provide her with status or validation or narcissistic supply You are also the target of all her life's disappointments, all of her resentments, all of her animosity. She will try to destroy your relationships. She wants you to suffer, okay? Malignant, narcissist, border into territory with psychopathy. This is why I tell my clients. It's a spectrum. Narcissism is a spectrum. It goes one extreme to the next. When it's in that really extreme end where you go towards <clears throat> really abusive, manipulative, coercive tactics, you start to see a bleed into psychopathy. And psych- psychopaths essentially have no empathy whatsoever. And here's the real difference. They take pleasure in the pain of others. You see this in malignant narcissists, okay? There's a huge overlap. And again, all psychopaths are narcissists, so stay with me. Malignant narcissists enjoy. They take pleasure in hurting others. My mother took pleasure when she got to punish me and there was times I, I remember sometimes seeing her like hiding a little bit of a smile when you know a kid was upset at getting punished for something they had done wrong 
that's what it is. And I think that we see that here. We definitely see that in the early videos, in my opinion, <clears throat> which again, you can find on TikTok. There are videos of Ruby taking pleasure in denying the children food. Uh, there's a whole video in which she takes a lot of glee in describing how her daughter forgot her lunch. So she's going to make sure that her daughter is hungry when she comes home. <clears throat> and she even says in the video, I hope no one gives her food today at school because she needs to learn her lesson for forgetting her lunch. This is a child, you guys. This is a child. This isn't even a teenager. This is like a child. This little girl was like 11 or 12 or something at this point. She's taking pleasure in it. You can tell from the performative way that Ruby talks, the intonation, the way it changes in her voice, by the way her facial features change, that there is a glee that she gets in these extreme punishments. She likes denying her children. It gives her a sense of power. It gives her a sense of happiness and kind of pride in herself. And that's where we see this malignant narcissism. We see it all the way in the start of Frank's story, Frankie's story. Sorry, Frankie's. But then we see it there at the end. And this is almost where it's more interesting to me is that now that Frankie has been exposed, which is is the narcissist's biggest fear, right? Frank Frankie fears more than anything else being exposed for what she is, which is a monster. And she's been hiding in plain sight with the validation of others, but that validation is gone now because the social credit that she has has changed. So now we see Frankie turning on her child, trying to isolate him and telling these really extreme stories about him assaulting neighborhood children, assaulting his siblings for years, having this devious um, pornography habit from the age of three or something, she said, or the age of six. It was really, really outrageous, whatever the claim she made was. But that is where the narcissist exposes themselves. So they get they get the mask removed. The public sees them for who they are or someone that matters to the narcissistic mother sees her for who she is. And there's a freak out. Right. And the narcissist frantically starts trying to cover up the hole that's now been exposed. The, they start trying to cover their face with with stories, essentially with lies. But the problem is the narcissist is not prepared and the narcissist is arrogant. So the narcissist starts telling stories that actually expose the narcissist even more, but they don't realize it because they're just frantically trying to point the finger and cover their face. And we see Frankie doing that now. She's made the claims that this child has used technology to develop a pornography addiction. Well, there's a lie in there somewhere. One of two things is happening. All of her videos show them not having access to technology and her bragging gleefully about how limited their access to technology was. These kids were not walking around with iPads and iPhones. They weren't hanging out on computers. OK, so one of two things is happening. She either lied about the access that they had to technology and this child really was looking up pornography or or she's made the story up to cover her ass either way. She's telling a lie somewhere. There is a lie happening somewhere. So which one is it? That is the first kind of big hole where she exposes herself. But the exposure then goes on. As she makes this story more elaborate in this in this shelter hearing where she's trying to isolate and destroy this child out of a need for revenge, she says that this child has been sexually assaulting siblings and also dozens of other children in the neighborhood and at school and church for years okay she says that this child's been doing this since like six something out absolutely outrageous you'll have to go and look it up i'm not going to quote it but it was it was outrageous well here's the second big hole then frankie so you're saying this child has been doing this for years let's suppose that that's true well then that means you've been covering it up for years haven't you why have you been covering it up for years? And also, if you've been covering up a crime that big, that major, that severe, doesn't it probably track that you would cover up and tell lies now when you were in trouble yourself? Again, huge holes. Narcissists don't think about this. And she also doesn't think about the fact that for well, she's too arrogant, right? She's she's way too up her own bum for it. But She's made the accusation now that this child has assaulted dozens, like 20 neighborhood children and people from the church and siblings and stuff like that, right? Yet there's no one to corroborate this. No siblings have these complaints. No neighbors have, no neighbors, no neighbors have any complaints. But what we do have 
is tons of complaints from the neighbors about their concern for the welfare of those children, all of them. What we do have is multiple calls to CPS from friends and family who were concerned about the welfare of the children. There's no evidence to corroborate what she said this child has done. She's even she even said that this child uh, did a sexual assault through what she called a padding game. But then she didn't go into what a padding game was. Again, we've got no evidence for that. But what we do have on TikTok is an unedited video of uh, Ruby Frankie patting her son who is laying face down on a bed uh, over and over again until it turns into like a violent, painful spanking on his back end that he begs her to stop. We do have a video of that. You see what I'm saying? Narcissists tell on themselves. Tell, 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 tell. Everything that she has pointed the finger at this 12-year-old for, we have basically videos of her doing the same thing. Or we have a video contradicting what she is saying, pointing out a lie. But she's too arrogant. She thinks that she knows better than everyone around her. She thinks that her story is going to fly because she thinks she's God. She thinks she's got a one-to-one connection with God, whatever it is. She's completely out of her mind and she won't keep her mouth shut. And that's part of the narcissistic spiral before the narcissistic collapse. Expose themselves. They just vomit everything up. And then it's catatonic hopelessness, depression, defeat, failure. But in Frankie's um case i think it's i think it'll be a long time before we see that i think we're going to see someone singing on the stand despite their lawyers urgings but you know we'll see how this plays out either way we are watching a narcissistic mother in action we are watching her in action in real time try to defend torture of children that she took pleasure in and this is significant Because she is not the only mother on this stage. And there are people running to her defense. There are women running to her defense. There were women in her comments building her up. Those are the children we need to be looking out for. And we need to use this opportunity as an example to never let this happen again. To stop applauding these women who use their children as social media fodder before those children can even consent to being on a camera. What if that child grows up and want to live in the woods and doesn't want to be all over someone's videos with them seeing, you know, their most private, intimate moments? It's something to think about and it's something we will have to pay attention to looking forward. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think this is going to play out? Do you think Frankie and Hildebrandt are going to go down for this? Do you think the dad, because he's just kind of being left out of the loop. He's even trying to get custody of the kids. What about him? Because he's in the videos with all this abuse as well. He allows this abuse, the medical neglect, all of that to happen. So what do you think? What do you think is going to play out? Do you think Frankie is a is a narcissistic mother? I really do want to know what you guys think. So, you know, let me know. You can head over to TikTok and let me know. You can head over to my website, therealebjohnson.com. Click contact. Let me know. I will be following this case. We are going to have some follow-up episodes with some really cool guests uh, covering this that I think is just going to shed even more light and just kind of help us, again, recognize these patterns so we can stop these women from from doing this in the future, from creating these huge platforms for themselves in which they can validate and encourage more abuse and neglect of children. So let me know. Go and let me know. Follow me on Substack. Um, I've got some some community discussion going on there about the case as well. So head over to Substack, practicalgrowth.substack.com or let me know on TikTok or on the real ebjohnson.com. I want to know what you're thinking about this case. And that is it. That is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved it, if you've been following for a while, please don't forget to go and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It just helps the podcast reach more people. It helps people find me. And more importantly, it helps you guys find each other, which is the really, really big part and really the most important part of my work is helping you guys find each other. So head over to Apple Podcasts to leave that review. If you want more of my advice, if you want to hear more about my thoughts on this case, head over to practicalgrowth.substack.com. I've got a community discussion going there, and I've got another article that takes a bit of a deeper dive into this and my personal thoughts on this case. Again, I will be covering this in upcoming episodes. I'm going to have some guests. We're going to break it down even further and get into the meat of it. So thank you so, so much for listening. 
Uh, and yeah, thank you for following me on Substack. You guys are great. A lot of you jumped right away, and I'm very grateful for that. So for everyone else, go apply for coaching if you want to get some coaching. Follow me on TikTok. And keep your heads up and keep your eyes on the stars. Keep moving forward. Bye-bye.